Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I told you guys I was gonna do some crazy tours from other, you know, just things. And today I'm with the crew from Overkill Campers. And we are going to tour this beast behind me right now, which is a off-road trailer-ish thingamajiggy. Camper trailer. Camper trailer. That can, we're gonna get all these details about not just the company, but this trailer in particular. I'm gonna spin around for everybody real slow, real quick, real whatever, but we're gonna show this trailer and what it's all about, what it can do, like what can pull it, right? What other, what rigs can pull it, what you need, all that good jazz. Yeah, here we go! This is uh, Brandon's on my left, JP's on my right. Uh, and actually, this is a really cool shot because I got that Overkill camper sign right behind you guys. Nice. You know, you guys have been with Overkill for how many years now? Since the birth. Since the birth. All right, so how long has Overkill been around? Going on uh, six years. Six years, yeah. You guys have gone through the trials and tribulations of... Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now you've come up with these things that are ridiculous. Yeah, this is our uh, production model, the SF510. When I moved to town, I was actually floored by everything you guys have been doing. Thank it's you. been phenomenal. You do everything in house, is that correct? We do, yeah. What do you uh, do? Pretty much everything but make the windows. You guys do the frames in house even? Do. You don't order frames, because a lot of companies will order frames. No, those are all made in house, uh, two by three, 120 wall, or 180 wall, fully boxed steel frame. It's All the like, welding's done here? Correct, yeah. So we uh, manufacture everything in-house, everything down to the bar work, the fenders, all the modular exterior bits that you see on the camper itself right here. All designed here by us and produced here. That's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JP, you and I were talking about how you guys have like a special certification that not many have, or any, I should I say. we're the only NHTSA certified camper trailer. NHTSA, what does that stand for? It's a National Institute of Highway Safety. So it's a government approval. So the trails will be in NADA, you know, sell it later on. Um, it'll have a government VIN instead uh -huh. of a local DOT VIN, which is a little bit more complicated when you try to transfer stuff across state lines. It certifies our engineering, our electrical, all that, all that stuff. And I can get a little sticker to show you. So all of that documentation, I guess, is given to the client correct. whenever they purchase one of your correct. campers. Absolutely correct. And the one we're about to show today is your largest one you have. Yes. Can you guys talk about anything you have in the works? If so, please do. I know because I know you guys personally, right. but I don't know what right. you guys want to share with the public. Um, we've got a few different models in the lineup for the next how, year. Two how many models year. do you have now? Currently we have two item, two models that you can purchase, uh, the TK47 mm -hmm. and the SO510. Which this, guy. The, this is the SO510. Correct. Correct. What does the SO stand for? Anything? Slide, Slide out. out. Oh, and the TK stand for? Trail killer. Trail killer. Yeah. Trail killer would, by the way, would look pretty BA on the back of my uh, Jeep. Yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. We made it for Jeep. You know, rugged Rubicon trails. It's really made. It's really lightweight and small enough to do those types of trails. SO can do those type of trails, but if you really want to do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. You got a, okay. You got a lot more amenities with the yeah, SO. Uh, exactly. Full onboard kitchen, sleeps more than you know, two. What is the weight? Like, this is a big camper. Can uh, one of you guys maybe explain, not so, big, but like uh, dimensions so, and weight? So the actual box itself is a five by 10 uh, composite box uh, sitting upon the two by three chassis. Right here, we're looking at a rolling weight dry of around 2150. Uh, that's including front boxes, awning, uh, Zarge's cases in the rear, full kitchen, water tank. 2150? Yeah. We've, that's we've, light. That's been our biggest goal over the years was to shave, you know, design something that was strong enough to withstand the abuse that we want to put it through. I actually watched you guys do a uh, walk around with a client recently, and it takes a little while for you guys to go over every nook and cranny of this thing with a client. Mm -hmm. sure um, I would say about two hours, give or take. Yeah. Give or take. Uh, we're not going to do this for two hours, so but <laughs> we good. are going to try and give as much you know information out there as possible. Again, you guys are located in Bend, Oregon. Bend, Oregon. Yeah. Let's take a look at this, and we have a lot to cover in this video. Awesome. You guys with me? Absolutely. <laughs> First off, uh, what's up with the color? Because the color is changing on me like crazy. Uh, who picked this, and uh, was this is this standard? I think that's just a figment of your imagination, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's one. That's one color. That's one color, the uh, all the way through. No, I'm messing with you. That's an, uh, a, a client 
custom pick this color. Uh, what was it called? Rolling Thunder. He's going for a different kind of uh, camo here. Okay. <laughs> Maybe more. I don't know if it's camo. Small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many options we provide for a client is if they want to wrap it a custom color. They can would, choose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's what does it come with a standard color? Like, what's your? It's white. So what you panned around, you've seen yeah. the white. That's what it would basically be. Interior is pigmented uh, with this kind of. Desert, green. yeah, kind of like a uh, earthy desert color. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to do the interior last. I was going to walk around the entire exterior. Yeah. Unless you guys, what do you guys typically start with? Do you guys start in the inside or go outside, or you guys outside to inside? We usually start dealers outside. Choice, uh, okay, then let's. Inside. You guys got two tires sitting here. What's yeah, going on? Uh, <laughs> well, we, we couldn't get the. Uh, we were sent a Mercedes lug wheel. Oops. And yeah. uh, we rock a Toyota lug GM pattern. GM lug pattern. I think it's a space. custom adapter. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, however, um, you guys, JP, you're telling me you're coming up with a standard uh, wheel. Yeah, I'm going uh, to show you one. We're please. Gonna, we're going to basically carry RRW. We believe we're going to go with, you know, this option here, which is the RRWS. These are nice, huh? Um, you can either choose bronze, gunmetal, or black. I like this bronze. It's pretty. It's going to look good on the campers. I see that, obviously, this is a standard, I guess, hitch, I would say. Yep, the lock and roll hitch. Basically a 360, but it doesn't allow the truck to bind with the trailer. The actual hitch itself goes side to side, and then this rotates 360. Does the client get this as well? Yes. Okay. Wow. Because that thing ain't cheap. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not going to send you cheap. home without the, the proper tools you need. The pin connections. There are two different types, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. There's a 7-pin and a 4-pin? Correct. So what is what does your guys' require? We have a 7-pin. We do. That just uh, allows you to have charge and tow. It allows you to supply 12-volt power to the camper itself. Also gives you trailer brakes. That's the one. I, I Actually, I, that's what I thought the 7-pin was, with Tra the brakes. Yeah. Yes. So that's the biggest difference. You also get the benefit of... Uh, the 12 volt supply to the rear. So it you can charge the battery. It's like a trickle charge to the battery. Mm -hmm. actually char That's why we have the solar panels up there. So it's charging while it's going down the road. It's not charging from the seven pin. But it does activate the brakes. Correct. Which is a huge deal Correct. while pulling this much weight. It also activates a, a magnet that holds the slide in as well. Most importantly, what's cool about having brake control on a trailer like this, an off road trailer, is in certain off-road situations where you might need that trailer to track behind you more true mm. versus then sliding a certain way on a trail. So to have that adjustment via your cab while you're driving is huge. Uh, we've personally used that feature n numerous times. Mm -hmm. While we're up here, I can sh this is a, a jack that we chose. It's an Australian jack. Okay. So rubber tires, it, it's easier to push around in mud and dirt uh, than the standard hard plastic tires utilize. So as you guys can see, they actually, they, every one of these actually lock, right, JP? Correct. One key for all the locks in the trailer. That is a um, massive refrigerator, guys. Yeah. And freezer, I guess. Yeah, fridge, freezer, 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 fridge, fridge, whatever you want. We choose to go with Snowmaster. I've never They're, even heard of this brand so until you guys a, introduced uh, it to me. South African brand okay. fridge. Um, the reason we went with Snowmaster is just the, the quality of build. Um, it comes with a remote with it. It comes with a bag as well, a thermal bag. Oh, it's if, cold right now. Yeah, because it's on. We've been running it for a while, just testing it out, make sure it's all working. These are constructed with metal on the inside as far as aluminum inside, so you can clean them easier. So we decided to go with these guys just for the, the benefit of the five-year warranty on them. Um, customer service is great. We just believe it's one of the better fridges out there. So back here is actually... You pop these little guys out. Let's see. There you go. It's reminding you that it's open. It's open. So then the water drains Wait out. Wait a minute. There. That beeping was reminding you that it was open? It's yeah. Closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a smart drains. travel fridge? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Bit of a luxury. Okay. Um, sure. Uh, and then those are little drains. That's yeah. that's really nifty. And then obviously you can go right, I can run right off the back there. Yep. Dimension or the, the cubic. 96. That's a lot. It's a slim line. Though. That's yeah. a lot of beers, right? Low profile. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a 96 low profile. And then the top box, does it have anything at all? This is strictly storage as far as the anything 
you can see like this is the cover if you ever decide to take this off the door back of your truck or rig yeah there's a plug in there you can plug it in you rig and then i actually see a propane on the other side should we swing around yeah, and, and kind of show what's on the other side propane it's got your water here for your uh, hot water this is your water fill um, so you protect a garden hose to whatever water source you have. That being said, if you know if we have a 32 gallon water. That was container. my next question. How many? How big is your tank? 32 gallons. Wow, that's a inside. big tank for a trailer. So we basically sure fill that in there. So and if once it's filled, we have a drain right here at the bottom. It'll start seeping when you know it's full. Gotcha. Then turn the water off. Hot water shower. You have a shower in a trailer. Outside shower. Outside I, granted, it's still the shower. We want to make people be outside. That's our whole premise behind our campus is more outside. We want you to be outside experience in the outdoors and not stuck in a camper. Bolted it in? Look yeah. at that. This thing not, is secure. Exactly. You're not tied down. It's very solid. You're not tied down to a proprietary tank where you're looking for more fuel in the middle of the night. You can right on. Know you know any local store of any time you can also do two if you want to add do two. you can add another one that's an option yeah, right here this is a slide out we'll get to that eventually guys don't worry but jp what are you about to show me here where all the power happens design this area to be kind of like the utility room we have our master power switch back here with the victron bms battery monitor system 712 uh, bluetooth connection super smart you can control it from your from the rig while you're driving to see you know what your solar is doing at that moment what your battery charge levels at pull over and plug into shore power right now we have a singular battleborn yeah <laughs> uh it's a it's a 100 amp hour yeah, yeah. I've been looking at a little deeper. Uh, that's a one you're like i just wired this all up i don't order the product i just designed it uh, i just designed it. no big deal run a singular line through the entire camper so those zero breaks between this cavity and the exterior cavity up front uh, ensuring that you don't have any issues. Interesting. Any leaks inside the camper. Mm -hmm. With that being said, it splits two ways. There's an option to have at least four more ports mm -hmm. or quick connects added to that uh, plenum, so, so to speak. If you want to add like a gas fire pit quick connection mm -hmm. or a secondary stove connection, we can do that all from the rear back here without really any invasive adaptations. That being said, we have one port plumbing the Propex interior heater and the other port plumbing the camp sh uh, cook partner. This is all the mechanicals literally to run this entire thing. Correct. All, you have all the... in one small cavity. And you mentioned Propex. Uh, for people that didn't pick up on this, this is your heating as well as your, and then your, your propane is also for your cooking. Correct. The Propex is the propane one, technically. One, and hot one water fuel shot. source. And hot water, yes. Yes, correct. Uh, one fuel source for the entire kit and caboodle. Also, our water pump is located back here with awesome. the accumulator. Uh, we use the SureFlow uh, system. Off that 32 gallon to look at you guys you're, you're not hiding anything no no you know no, nothing's proprietary with you guys you guys are just like forget it i'm going with it yeah. try designing this is what brandon's saying <laughs> it's been six years of a lot of fun trial and error <laughs> uh, and you guys are still making upgrades oh, now, yes. oh, you know we um, always want to make it better for our customers that is a lot uh for everybody to take in however is do you feel like the 100 amp hours to run all the lights and everything else is plenty or what's optional to add a second barrier as oh. well so you'd have two batteries in there so you can you, wow 200 amp hours to we run can all actually that get to the point where you have 300 amp hours in this configuration that being said it's pretty standard 100 amp hours is great for like the weekend warrior yeah, absolutely uh, paired with a 180 watt uh, sun flare panel on the roof next question was standard. thank you was the solar panel <laughs> yeah. i don't see it i don't know where the heck it is I, what that's, that's better oh uh, yeah it is i you mean you don't want an appendage that you have to pull out plug in think about i didn't know you had a solar panel we, up we've there we've taken all that guesswork out so we have a standard 180 on the roof 180 watt correct that gives you you know as long as weather permits and you mentioned the name before maybe everybody missed it but you gave all the brand names for everything else so what do you use Sunflare. 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 Yep. Okay, which is fascinating because I believe I'm going to put that on my Jeep. Perfect. Nice. <laughs> we both rock it on our vehicles. Do you really? We do. Yeah. Uh, you have actually a Toyota 4Runner. Correct. And you have. I have an old Land Cruiser. An <laughs> uh, old Land Cruiser that's yeah. a right hand drive. Yeah. It's I mean, I'm sorry, man. I love that thing. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, what's cool about them is that you can walk on it. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. No, you can't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know this that I'm getting one. <laughs> it has a 25 year warranty on them. A 25-year warranty on this solar panel? And you can walk on it. Awesome. This is a, your back gate area. Galley. Ga it's your galley. Thank you, JP. What the heck is going on here? Because it looks like you have a very minimal, but I know there's a lot back here. 110 outlets. We have... You can I turn one of these lights on? Can I turn lights on? Yeah. 
You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I don't, shouldn't say this, but, uh, my brother used to have an R pod mm -hmm. and, uh, this was very, not R pod ish, but I guess R pod ish, right? The, the back had like its own little area. Mm -hmm. I know that you guys didn't rip that design off, but it was. Most teardrops do have Thank a you. rear galley. There's actually a purpose to that. Yes. Uh, this is a, a large box to construct and to just leave it open in the center promotes a lot of structural problems. So there's an actual structural bulkhead here, which oh. thus divides the living quarters from the rear, uh, let's say, quarter of the trailer. That's an engineering so, talk so, for everybody. So we're like, well, like <laughs> gifted this area uh, below it, the utilities, above it, storage. Basically, the design environment was we wanted to utilize all the space a chair drop could have. We don't want to lose the round shape of that. We want to utilize that space so people can pack more stuff or use, use it more. The box itself is a five by 10. You're fitting a lot into a very small space, everybody. What are the, what are these cool little thingamajiggies? So these are Zarges boxes on slides. Zarges? Zarges. Yeah, oh, Zarges. Zarges. German who made this. Just so pack stuff and take it apart. And okay. Take it off and bring it somewhere, a diff different location, like a fire pit, or if you're walking down to the beach or whatever. However you decide to pack these things. And, that's pretty nice. Actually. So it's like a suitcase that you can take on They're and off. Awesome storage yeah, solutions. So yeah. You can basically undo these guys here. Little pins. Just undo those guys there. And slide the box out and take it anywhere. Nice. With you, so. Like you said, like if you were to go to a beach or exactly. whatever. Like whatever you want to pack. You're maybe a camp. They're fully lockable. They've been around for a numerous amount of years. Awesome case. I, I actually travel with these. We've taken all the knowledge that we've accrued and what we need to be almost minimalistic and applied it into a very, very detailed camper. We use our equipment and we know what works and what lasts and we apply that information and technology. I mean, we have collectively over a hundred years of of experience between uh, the two of you and the the other dave exactly i loved how you just put this out thing this thing yeah. is nice it's more just a aluminum right yep more surface space and you'll see why we have this back here is basically you can still conversate with people inside the camper if they're waking up in the morning you're making coffee back here or thanks for doing. pointing that out you actually have yeah. a walk through yeah pass through so you'll actually see that when we get inside you want to poke your head in there so i can see you boss man there he is. There's that. There's that pretty face. Uh, let me ask you a question, JP. Yeah. Let's say if I was uh, a health nut, right, and I wanted to uh, make a smoothie mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, and I have this blender, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you guys don't have a blender in here, mm -hmm. but you have an outlet right there. Yep. And I put a blender on this table. Mm -hmm. Can your outlet handle a blender uh, power? I guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have an inverter in your whole system. Inverter is an option. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have everything pre-plumbed, uh, pre-wired. Mm -hmm. To accept any inverter that the client wishes yeah. to install. Perfect. I love that. You talked about propane cooking. I don't see where that where where is this thing? That was that was a cue for everybody. That was, if you guys were curious, <laughs> I'm gonna go on the other side because I'm pretty sure it goes this way, right? Look at that sink. This is where the partner stove would go. So you um, normally have a stove right here. Yes. Yeah, so we leave it an option, partner stove is an option. Okay. Because some people have their own stoves. Okay. So they like to have their own space. So I'm assuming this client already has his own. Uh, he, he does. He, he does. does, okay. Uh, we also incorporate a nice little slide out. Oh, look at that! Isn't that cute? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, utensils, uh, yeah, yeah, utensils, yeah. Tongs, I actually saw you guys play with the sink with another client. I yeah. found that really interesting. You want to show that to me, JP? Sure, so we hook up all our water stuff through here. And our gas too. Um, once we get to our location, we want to set up the kitchen. Basically, just plug these guys in. They're like quick connects. Quick connects to the actual. That's it. That's it. And you set up for water. Once we turn all the features on, and then gas would be right there as well. That's really simple. Do you really you have water already turned on for me? I heard the pump. pump. I heard the pump. Yeah. So we can actually I'll get a oh, let's run out because we. Purposely drain. Oops. Yep. We purposely <laughs> drain. Well, that's enough water. We, we yeah, we purposely <laughs> clog this so water usage. Ah, I see. Conserve water. You, and it's up to the customers. I want to take you, that off and let it drain. You got 32 gallons. So, yeah. I mean, you have to be mindful. This isn't 
you know, a hotel. Right. You don't have, <laughs> you don't have all the amenities. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah the, we're called adventure seekers. This right. Is, this is uh, meant to push you outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But to give you the the compatibility to sure. live comfortably, safely, and uh, you know, keep exploring because yeah. that's our that's what we're all about. And lastly, I'm just going to touch on the outside. You guys have your awning uh, made by one of JP's favorite companies. Yes. Um, Cab. The Outlook Cab. And that is a special awning because why, JP? It's a 270 awning. Uh, it's probably the best awning as far as the strength. Um, 60, 70 mile an hour winds, you're pretty safe in not putting a leg down. Most people will put a leg down, but you don't have to. Is it manual or is it automatic? It's manual. Okay. Just wraps around 270 around the backside and connect it. I will say to conclude the exterior, Please. this step is removable. What? Yeah. <laughs> this is not a... Uh, <laughs> A permanent feature. So what? What do people normally do? Just take it out and just throw it in here. Take whatever. it off. You can toss in there. The front box. Yeah, you know, whatever, whatever they want. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Right. The ground clearance. I was gonna say that that's that's for clearance purposes. Exactly. So when you're going in extreme off-road areas, you, you're gonna hit that step. Yeah, right. Can. That's all. Oh, that's a given. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the clearance of your trailers? This right here is uh, 19 inches, sitting on 33s. Yeah. Which is more than most cars or trucks. Oh, it's, yeah. Absolutely. Golf right. Or, and mean, the timber and suspension is axless, so you, it's all clear at the bottom. So it's There's 19, no 19 oh. inches through the center on 33s. We've had a client uh, running one of these on 37s. I mean, holy crap. The math, you get a few more inches there. Mm-hmm. You guys have this slide out, the uh, your SO model. Um, mm-hmm. Now we're finally getting in the inside. Do you guys want to maybe slide this out or maybe show me how that does that sure. work? So the first thing you would do, we, we sort of have two safety features in our camper fantastic as far as a slide out we have a pin and we also have the magnet so once the truck is plugged in mm-hmm. it magnetizes the magnet so the slide can't go out plugged in and running plugged in and running yeah. okay be, it has to be running it has to be running so the car has to be on seven pin. got you powers the seven pin so once you turn that off it demagnetizes the magnet okay uh and then at that point we have a, a pin inside this is a massive pin we pull this pin out here okay Lay it on the bed. We just slide this guy out. You did that one-handed. Now, is there a, a locking mechanism to put it in place? Yes. So you use the same pin. Oh. And there basically, you slide it in right there. Awesome. And you're locked that. Step in, and you guys can kind of give me the rundown. Oh, we're gonna sit. We're gonna sit three in here comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Technically, JP and I are, are sitting on the bed, I guess, right? Yep. Um, and this would actually sleep too very comfortably. It's 55 wide. 55 uh, wide. 77. 70, 78. Wow. Three fourths or something like that. 79 and three fourths long. Plenty of space up in here. You got two windows, mm-hmm. which is the only thing apparently you don't do in house. <laughs> It's, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Um, uh, I believe they have a double shade. They have a, a shade and a, uh, they do. a I screen. I can actually show you that right here. There you go. So, yeah, you just slide that up, click it in, you connect it. Boom. Now you have privacy. Have privacy. It's a pretty sweet design. And then they're actually awning out, if I say oh, yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just a couple, a couple quick mounts there. And like you guys said, or, you know, Brandon, you've talked about several times, you want to get people outside. Exactly. Even though this is extremely comfortable inside, your goal was to get them out. So you have seating for at least four. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, on a lagoon? This mm-hmm. is a lagoon mountain. Okay. So we offer a wide variety of soft storage uh, held on by a cutter welt that we make in-house as well. Cutter uh, welt? Yeah, it's a really cool product that this whole system just slides out. right into to take it out and apply it to a... Uh, like a different location? Exactly. Interesting. So that can be equipped to the inside of your cabinetry here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could you could actually, yeah, outfit the entire inside of this box with that same storage solution based upon, like, mm-hmm. plates that you want to store. Okay. You know, games for the kids, any types of, uh, you know, activities that you would want to keep inside. And the reason we leave it open is... That- because each customer has their own customization. Great, ah, that's yeah. it's very smart whatever. actually. We can you know supply them with bags and stuff like that if they choose that. It's basically you know design your own trailer at that point. And all of this cabinetry is constructed from uh, 14 mm-hmm. gauge aluminum. No wood. Yeah. No, no wood. wood. No wood. Very, very lightweight. There's no wood, but it still gives a warm feeling in here because you guys have faced it, I guess. With yeah, there's a high pressure laminate that is 
on this probably as well? Just, yeah, probably just as strong as the aluminum itself. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, that laminate, and it's very easy to clean, too. Oh, yeah. Very easy to clean. Entirely. Important. Now, I'm sitting on a, it looks, feels like a four-inch cushion, maybe five-inch. That is a four-inch. Okay. Jack, so it's uh, also made in-house. Not yeah. the not the film itself. Right. Uh, but we have an in-house upholster who does all of this interior work. Really well done. This fabric is called Duramax. It is true yeah. its name. Yeah. It is it's Duramax. It's stout. Yeah. <laughs> Very stout. Yeah. Is it a high-density foam? Because honestly, I'm, I'm, I can't feel the, the, the platform underneath it me. Oh, yeah. It's really comfortable. Nice Another job. Cool little feature. And Please. A lot of people don't really recognize it. Oh, you're with the lights, it's aren't the you? Lights. Yeah. <laughs> is you know each light is individual. You oh can wow. Turn each light it off. On. Well, and also, it's cool. And so if you leave that off, you can dim them. And there's a master memory. So let's kill the the power for a sec. Sure. It's off. Turn back on. And it the still remembers stays. it, right? It remembers yeah. each light. And it, this was slightly dim, yeah, technically. So. Yeah, and then you can. Lighten it up if you want. And the, and the master memory will remember the dimness, Correct. remember it's off, everything. All that. And all the electronics is run on the Switch Pro. I know we didn't mention that. Switch Pro? Switch, Switch Pro. Pros. Meant for off-road, meant yes. for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You might have some people ask about paneling walls. You said there's no wood in here, so this is not plywood. This is not plywood. Yeah, this, this is a uh, composite material. Cool. Uh, essentially, this is a gel-coated fiberglass. Uh, potentially, yeah, whatever that is, yeah. <laughs> so technically, your what is this, fiberglass composite panel or whatever? Correct, yeah. It's but a, yeah. it has an R value technically to it? It does. Yes. That's crazy to me. So there's no, there's no like, uh, there's no wool insulation, which all the van lifers use. No, no, there, there's no, uh, it, it's structurally sound and it provides... So it's, it's one panel that encompasses the R value, the strength and rigidity all in one panel. And we're able to produce that, cut it all in house and assemble it all here. Uh, which also uh, brings me to my next point. It's not cheap. No. This, no. these panels are not cheap. And I believe you have to buy them in bulk if I, oh, yeah. if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah. yeah. No, it isn't easy to get. Uh, <laughs> that's been one of the trials and tribulations over the years is securing a manufacturer. There's a lot that goes into it. And so, like I said before, you guys are always upgrading, you're always evolving, you're always getting new stuff. I'm excited to see what else you guys have in the future for all of us. There is one more feature that I kind of want you guys to talk on the inside. What happens here? There is more. We can turn it into a, a kid bed or a dog bed. A kid bed or a dog bed. Yeah. It's a smaller kind of platform bed. I'm going to hop out. You're going to hop out? Basically turn this guy around. Even put it on the back if this you wanted to. This is I usually, you know store it for uh when we're traveling and then i just stick it back here when we're setting up for bed i'll go up here pick this panel up here this slides across and you even took into effect there's the like even with the lagoon you could just slide it right across because the it missed the lagoon leg correct that's interesting and then we just fold this guy out and that's, that's, a that's a little puppy Kids pad. or puppies. I like it. Whatever uh, you choose at that point. And just an extra, I guess, sleeping area. That's yeah, great. Exactly. Uh, but is there any other features you'd like to show me before we kind of say goodbye um, to everybody? So we have, we, we talked a little bit about it, the Propex. No, oh, okay. It's, the, all the controls are right here. Yep. So you have your thermostat there. You have a USB port and a 12 volt port. Always nice features to have. Uh, the Propex, obviously, uh, you can take this into extreme weather, cold weather. Absolutely. Because of that Propex we here. We made it specifically for that. Awesome. I'm gonna pop out and we're just gonna say, oh, uh, they have, you guys have storage drawers under here. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. Drawers. It's pretty nice. Uh, guys, uh, really, really thought out. Like I said, this I think this is, like you said, Brandon, six years in the making. Because I'm going to show a lot more of you guys. I know there's other things in the works, which I cannot say publicly. My viewers will be one of the first to see it because I'm making them. Or making you guys show me. So there is some big stuff happening with Overkill Campers. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you guys taking out. Uh, by the way, it's a weekend. So I appreciate you guys coming down here on a weekend. Uh, that's what we do. No worries. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is what we do. This is your life. Exactly. Sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm for everybody that didn't pick up on that. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys next time.